Welcome back to the channel. Today I have another Thunder Laser video tutorial to share with you. Today I'm gonna walk you through one of the most important things that you have to do as soon as you get your laser set up. You are gonna to wanna to do some test cards for the materials that you plan on using. This is gonna allow you to know the exact scoring settings, cutting settings, and engraving settings for all of your most popular materials. Having these test cards is gonna end up saving you money in the long run because when you are running a project, the last thing that you wanna do is get the settings wrong and then the entire project that you've just completed can't be used. So let's dive right in. All right, the first thing we need to do is get a material test card file. I grabbed mine right from the Thunder website. I love it because it's larger and super clear to understand. Once you are on the website, you'll just need to scroll all the way down to the bottom to the file section and then click the download button. When the file is on your computer, just double click it or drag it right into Lightburn. Lightburn is the program that most people with lasers use to run their machine. So once Lightburn is open, the very first thing that you're gonna always wanna do is make sure that your laser is connected to your computer. You just wanna make sure that your USB or ethernet cable is connected. Once in Lightburn, let's make sure your laser is connected properly. You're gonna click devices and then make sure that your machine pops up and then click OK. Next, you'll need to grab your wood or whatever material you're using to measure how thick it is. I use this little caliper I grabbed from Amazon for under $10, I think, and it comes in so handy. It's a super sensitive tool, so I love how precise I can get the measurements. So you just slide it over your material and pinch the calipers together until you have a nice, tight fit. To make sure everything's organized, each card you make should have its own unique material at the top. So we need to change the text line here to reflect that. To change the text layer, we need to ungroup the file. So you go to Arrange and then Ungroup. When you have a lot of layers like this with similar colors, I like to just click the Output and Show buttons. When you click, just pay attention to which color or line is changing on the screen or file. When you have the right layer, double click. Next, you need to locate the text that you need to change. In this case, it's at the bottom setting in the Cuts and Layers panel. Make sure that is highlighted, then you can change the material by clicking the letter A, which is your text tool on the left side of your screen. These test cards I did here are for alder and maple wood. Then I'm just putting the thickness of the wood as well as where we purchased it. A tiny extra step that I like doing on all of our material cards is to cut a little hole uh, just in the corner so that I can bind them together and keep them all in one place. I just love having everything organized and very easy to find. To make the cutout, just click the circle in the tool panel on the left. Then we just need to click and drag your mouse to the size that you want. Then change to the arrow tool, which is how you move things around in Lightburn. Just put the circle where you think it looks best. This does not need to be perfect. I made sure to make the perimeter of the test card and this circle cut out the same color so that the settings were gonna be the same and they would cut out properly. I used a value of 20 for the speed and a power of 50. Just because I know that these are really safe values to get a cut on this particular type of wood. With the text changes done, let's just group it all back together by going to Arrange and then Group. Next, you also need to make sure that your machine settings are accurate. The first few test cards that we did were not accurate at all just because we skipped this little step. Normally when you put in your settings and parameters, it's not gonna make a huge difference between the minimum and maximum values. However, there are some times that you do notice a tiny little defect in an engrave or a cut. 
Notice on this thin piece of plywood that nothing below a cut speed of 10 is actually cut out properly. Technically, everything down here should have popped right out. It's because we have to change the minimum speed in light burn to something under 5. So, let's do it. When the screen pops up, you're gonna see that it has a minimum value of 10 right here. So you're just gonna wanna change that to four. And then you're gonna click OK and close this out. When you're first setting up these cards, a lot of this is guesswork, but there is a file on the Thunder website. I'm going to go ahead and link that down below as well, but it's kind of like a standard estimate for all of the materials and what settings you're going to need for all of them. Make sure you click the right laser. We have a 51 100 watt. You can either download and print the file or just keep it on your computer. I've seen people print and laminate it so they can keep a hard copy nearby the laser machine. You can see that there are estimates for cutting and engraving on a big variety of materials. And what the suggestions are depending on if you have a 2 inch or a 4 inch head. Super handy little guide to have around. And here are the last few steps. I know it seems like it's a lot to run a laser, but once you get the first one kind of set up, everything can be done in less than two minutes. And this next part isn't really absolutely necessary. I just love having the ability to use the feature. In Lightburn, go to the top tool panel and click the little computer screen. Your project will show up and then you can actually preview how it's going to be cut and or engraved. It will also tell you the total time the project will have. This is such a great little feature to have in Lightburn because you're going to be able to preview the entire project and if there are any defects or skips or anything like that, it's going to show up in this preview screen. So before you ruin any material and waste it, you'll be able to, you know, just make sure that everything is exactly how it's supposed to be. The last thing to do before running the project is to have your origin set. We always do user origin so we know exactly where the project will start and have control over that. Click send, change the name of the file if you need to, and then it's go time. Get your wood or material into the laser. Make sure that it's as flat as possible. Use magnets or clamps for this if you need it. Once you have the file on the laser, we just need to focus everything. Move the laser head using the arrows on the right side of the panel on the laser to where you want the project to start. Then move the bed up or down and get it fairly close to your material. Use your little focus tool and get it to as close to six millimeters as you can. That's our most accurate focal length. Just hit origin and then frame. This is another cool feature that allows you to see exactly where the project will be cut. And now the magic. Close the laser and you are ready to roll. Just hit start and then let the machine do its thing. When it stops, open her back up Move the head out of the way so that you don't accidentally hit anything. Remove the magnets and your new test card. Because this was a fairly thin piece of material, I didn't adjust any of the other settings, so you can see a lot of extra char and dust. Don't fret when this happens because 9 times out of 10, it will wipe right off. If it's deeper like this though, we just grab some fine sandpaper. I think I'm using 220 grit here and it sands right off beautifully. Again, these test cards are so important. They will end up saving you so much time, effort, and money because you're going to be wasting a lot less material. You can see the exact settings and parameters for score lines, cut lines, and your engraving settings. And last but not least, no video would be complete if I didn't do a little bit of organization. This is why I wanted to cut that little circle in the top left corner. I grabbed these large three inch binder rings from Amazon and just threaded them through each of the cards. For now though, I love having all of these handy and ready to go anytime we work on a project. 
All right, friends, that is all I have for you today. We love making these videos, so if there are any questions or tutorials that you can think of that you need for your own laser experience, then please, please, please let us know in the comments down below. Have a great week, friends, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.